Hello everybody, welcome to Salesforce Break. Today I'm going to focus on decision elements in flows. Uh, in Winter 21 we have enhanced decision functionality and we also have a brand new functionality for record triggered flows where we can actually pick in which scenario specifically we want the record triggered flow to run. But before I go over that functionality, let me tell you what the scenario I'm going to be dealing with. Uh, I'm going to be looking at the opportunity object and I wanna run a flow before save whenever the opportunity is marked close one. And I want to evaluate the amount on the opportunity and I want to mark the opportunity as a small, medium, large or extra large deal. And I want to also evaluate the delivery installation status and check whether the delivery is in progress already or not. And I'm going to use the description field on the opportunity to add relevant comments uh, to see whether my scenario is working successfully or not. And I will build this flow step by step with you on this video. Let's get right to it. Now, let's create a new flow. This is going to be a record triggered flow and I'm going to use the brand new Winter 21 functionality for auto layout. And this flow is going to be running whenever a record is updated. And it's gonna be a before save flow. Now I'm going to choose the object this flow is going to run on, it's opportunity. And the stage needs to be equal to close one. And here is the new functionality choices that we have. We can either decide to run this flow every time a record is updated and meets the condition requirements, or only when a record is updated to meet the condition requirements. I actually want to run this flow whenever um, the record is updated to meet this requirement, meaning that whenever the stage name is changed and the new stage is going to be close one. I don't want the flow to run when somebody edits the description field, for example. So uh, let's create a decision element here to evaluate the delivery status. Now here, I want to check whether the delivery status is in progress. I want to use, because this is a before save flow, I want to use the dot record delivery installation status. And this needs to be equal to in progress. And I want to, again, in my decision element, make the choice to evaluate this as true only if the record that triggered the flow to run is updated to meet the condition requirements. So if an opportunity is updated to close one, and at the same time, the delivery installation status was updated to in progress, this decision criteria is going to evaluate true. If not, it's going to go to the default branch. Okay, so we have the in progress branch over here and we have the default branch over here. Now, what I wanna do is I want to assign a positive message to the description field of the record. So I'm going to add and say, congrats, sales person already has delivery 
in progress. Okay, so we have done that. That's done and complete. Now I want to add an additional decision element here to check the amount of uh, the opportunity. Let's call this opportunity size decision element. Now what I want to do is I want to add multiple outcomes here, conditional outcomes, and I want to evaluate all of them in the same decision element. So the best way of doing that is by starting with the smallest amount in this scenario. So less than 50,000. I got to use dot record amount is less than 50,000. This time I'm using if the condition requirements are met. I'm not going to change the default here. And The next outcome condition is going to be less than 250,000. Mm. Actually, let's make this 100,000. 100,000. Now, some of you may be thinking, do I need to add also the condition that it needs to be larger than 50,000? In this case, scenario, I don't need to do that, actually. The reason for that is when you are using a decision element in flow, the flow decision element is going to evaluate the outcomes in the sequence. That's why you have actually uh, the opportunity here, the, the functionality to be able to change the sequence. You can drag these, these things and then move them up and down. So, and the way it's going to work over here is, it's going to evaluate first whether the opportunity amount is less than 50,000. If not, it's going to go to 100,000. So we don't actually have to repeat on our second outcome that the amount has to be greater than 50,000, but less than and less than 100,000. So it's, it's already taken care of. So this is going to be our small deal, medium deal and large deal. Let's also put an extra large deal. Well, our extra large deal is going to be actually the default outcome. So we can delete this outcome and call this one the extra large deal. So I go done. I have successfully segmented the amount. Now I want to assign to the description the segmentation. So add to the description small deal, right? So, and here 
I want to add to the description um, medium. Here, I want to add to the description large. Oops, too large. And here this outcome branch I want to assign to the description extra large so and after I'm done with all this, uh, my flow can end. I don't really have anything else uh, to do on this flow. Now let's save this one, see whether we get any errors. Let's call this one flow decision op. So we didn't get any errors. Let's activate this one. Let's make sure that's the only flow that we have activated, which is true. These are coming from a managed package. And let's go back to test this one opportunities. So our scenario is going to dictate that the flow only runs when the status is changed from another status to close one. So we want to create actually a small um, opportunity to test this. And let's call this one test one. save this well, obviously I gotta choose the stage let's say this one is needs analysis stage now let's check the description the flow should not have run in this scenario and the description has not changed now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the stage as complete sorry I'm, I'm going to mark the stage as closed and mark close one and in this scenario I'm going to see that the flow ran on my opportunity and it updated the opportunity as a small deal now you're going to also see that the description that I've added for uh, delivery status did not uh, update anything on this flow yet so let me just create that scenario as well Let's change the status to decision makers, ID decision make makers. And let's change the size of the opportunity. Let's make it 175,000, 175,000 dollars. Let me just delete the description right now and save this. So as you see, the description has not been updated. In this scenario, the flow didn't run at all. The scenario doesn't meet the entry criteria for the flow. Now, if I go into this opportunity, I edit it 
and this time I'm going to also mark the delivery status is in progress and at the same time I'm going to mark the opportunity close one it's going to update the opportunity with the comment I have added congrats salesperson already has delivery in progress and it's going to also segment the opportunity as a large deal exactly as I defined in my flow so voila guys it worked successfully there is one more thing I wanted to show you very briefly now when you're dealing with decision elements and if you're coming from the process background from uh, the world of process builders you might want to create your decision elements to look like this because that's how usually they look like in process builders right this is actually not an efficient way of building your flows uh, you don't need this many decision elements it's going to take a lot of time to build this and also it's very inefficient in terms of computing as well when the when your flow is going to run it's going to run through all of these different decision elements now you shouldn't have to do this at all in this kind of scenario you don't need these at all you don't want to evaluate mm, well actually you need this first one you don't want to evaluate all these different branches one after another because if one falls through the other ones don't need to be evaluated but even in this scenario you have all these unnecessary decision elements so nine out of ten times you don't need this many decision elements especially if you're evaluating the same field in your decision element which is the case here record dot, dot record dollar record amount is being evaluated so you can use only one decision element as we have done in our example successful example and uh, you need different outcomes to configure enjoy guys